Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at closing the model in preparation for the data transfer. Although uh, most uh, good modelers always work with a closed model uh, right from the early stages of the model because there's a very good reason for that. You can't uh, data transfer a model to a milling machine to mill out a clay model or a hard plastic model or for tooling or any other purpose unless the model is completely closed, completely watertight. So uh, get into the bad habit of not closing your model whilst you're working and then all of a sudden your boss gets an, a directive to send it to, to be milled then this could be hours and hours of work of messing around closing uh, awkward uh, gaps in the model like for example this headlamp area uh, in order to be able to get it ready for data transfer and you know the automotive industry doesn't really work like that everything has to be ready at the snap of a snap of the finger so if the model is already closed then okay it may not be the shape or anywhere near the final shape but uh, it's ready for data transfer uh, at any time. Very often a, a model is sent to be milled into clay uh, before it's ready, before all the changes uh, have been completed on, on the in the alias model and the reason for that is that there's a, a slot in the schedule on the milling machine or there's a group of clay modelers standing around or with no work to do, just making tools and cleaning their equipment and costing thousands of pounds uh, a week so then the decision might be made to an economic decision to send your model down to be milled and let the clay modelers sort out the areas that perhaps you were intending to finish in alias so that's a bit of a uh, insight there into what goes on in the industry now um, whenever you're designing uh, the front part of a car or any part of a car in fact the car exterior you need the wheels and uh, you don't start with the series production wheels this is an Audi series production wheel so we get rid of that very nice but it's not what we want and we're going to put in just a bog standard modeling wheel like so it doesn't look as nice but performs exactly the same function and it's not possible to model this part of the car without having a wheel to reference to and the designer right from the uh, inception of the model the designer will want to see wheels to and the wheels may change the uh, size of the diameter and the width of the tire might change and the model has to change accordingly so let's get on with the purpose of this particular video which is to show you how to close the underbody of the model first thing we'll do is to take our wheel out of the view and then I'll bring in the underbody that I have prepared for this model and you'll see that first of all we have to consider building a wheel box so I'll explain to you how I do that quickly first of all I'll take a duplicate curve from the inside of the wheel arch flange then I planarize that curve and I put a, a line across here and then I build a D-shaped planar surface and move it inboard to that point there so that's the surface that you're looking at there it's just a, it's just a planar surface and then when that's in position I build a skin surface from the radial wheel arch here to the edge of the skin surface so that's the kind of first part of the job done. Then I would take a curve from uh, on this particular model from that corner on the y-axis so I, I would use the middle mouse button and just bring it uh, along here make it longer than I need and then I would attach a curve here on the x-axis and bring it along here and then in, in top view use the extend tool to sh shorten the two curves and make sure and make them intersect and then run another curve down here. For this you can use a key line curve like that degree one. Here I would put a monorail surface so let me show you how to do that. 
I'm going to use a 1-2 monorail surface. So I'll start here and then I'm going to pick curved segments and with that you can adjust where the boundary starts and finishes and that is a very useful tool for this type of work it's very useful for concept work as well okay so that's the first surface in and you hit go by the way just to finalize that surface I'm going to use a by rail here so degree 3 by degree 3 I've got a key line curve there and I've, we've got this key line curve here so we can use those as our two gen curves and then we'll build to the surface that we just put in so that's the next step done now this is um, perhaps the main point of the tutorial if you have a shape like this this is a kind of quadrant shape it can be any shape a triangle and what to do with it so as you can see what I've done here is I've created a square and then I'm built from the square sometimes a square isn't a suitable shape to have there you might want a square with a radius or an arc and then like so and you can build from that you can even trim here to form a, a trimmed out quadrant and build from that it just depends what you're doing but for building an underbody which is not a critical thing uh, this is what we're going to use so I'll show you how to do that you take the key line tool and attach it where you think is appropriate I'm going to put it there and then I'm going to go to F7 I need to zoom in here and just place it using the left mouse button so it's going to be planar and then back to F8 and then using the control key I can snap to there and then curve snap to here control key snap to there and curve snap which is uh, control out to there and there are my curves in situ and as you can see we've got four sides four sides and four sides so take the square tool now the rail tool isn't very good when you've got a curve very a big big curve like that in the boundary so let's get the square tool out I'm going to use just fixed boundary and we'll use uh, as our kind of default degree 3 but we have to change it we can use degree 3 here because it's just a simple rectangle but it's not going to work here so we'll just build that first and then we'll have a look always build to the surfaces don't build to the lines where you've got a choice and here you see we need more degrees so I'm going to put that up probably going to need to put it up to degree 6 there we are and here I'm going to start there so I started in the same place so that was that was boundary one this is going to be boundary one and build to the square not to the line and you need more degrees here so I'm just going to turn on the the hull and you see we've already got degree six we're going to go to degree seven and that's fixed it for us and let's just quickly run through other points about building this most of it is fairly logical and now that I've shown you that different shading on it's easier to see so obviously these surfaces are straightforward to work out how you build those and then if you've got something like this then first of all what I've done is I've built a rectangle here and then I've taken it to there's two surfaces there by the way so that's why I've taken a, a, a line from from the surface boundary here to create that rectangle and then another line to this rectangle to create that rectangle and to leave a four-sided surface and a four-sided surface so I think that should be fairly easy to understand although when you start doing it you'll find it's uh, perhaps a little bit trickier than it looks but you'll get there 
and just point out that this is not a whole whole front end it should be a front apron here and it should come down here the rocker panel should be there so just in case you're wondering why it's rather strange proportions I'm going to delete those surfaces that I just built and then I just bring back the surfaces that I've already got here so I don't want the curves I can get rid of those only keep what you need don't uh, keep things for the sake of keeping them now on my mouse here I've got template pick and template make which I call it and there it is so they're back to my original surfaces okay and the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted uh, watertight surfaces this one here check model and this is a pretty standard way to set it up I'm not going to go through it all if you want to see it you can I'm sure pause the video and go through it all okay so th those are your sort of fairly standard um, requests when using this tool now what I'm going to do is to pick the model so I pick all the surfaces and hit check and here we are it gives me and it tells me that everything is okay but I have multi knots in this surface in the U direction and uh, okay which surface are they talking about well I happen to know but what if you didn't know okay come here to pick and pick all errors and you see it, it highlights this surface for us so I'm going to put controls on and we can see that we have a lot of spans and a lot of parameterization that is perhaps unnecessary so we might consider to build that with shorter surfaces we could use a detach tool and then build small rail surfaces or squares to get around that problem because that's a really heavy piece of geometry to be sending to a computer controlled uh, milling machine so that's how you check the model the, the model is completely watertight uh, if it wasn't it would they would be called out here all those all those gaps and whatever i hope that you found this tutorial interesting thank you very much for taking time to watch it and bye for now